Broadcast from Land Vegas 14. We are live, getting ready to go with some primal carnage. We've had some ups and some downs, some power outages, and well, a lot of fun. I am Eckstein, representing for the XTV crew, joined by Aaron Pollock. Aaron Pollock, yes, Aaron Pollock, Aaron, uh, producer and studio director for Circle 5 Studios. Uh, one of the two teams behind Primal Carnage Extinction, the newest uh, the newest edition of the Primal Carnage brand. And uh, Pub Games is the second studio out there out of Australia. But I'm here in Vegas. I'm a Vegas logo and uh, thrilled that everybody's out here for this. Yeah, definitely. It's been a lot of fun. Really cool with the skill con floor behind us. You guys will see the projector. Uh, looks like they're handing out some yo-yo trophies right now. Uh, we've had a really great view of the festivities. It's been fun convention so far. It is a crazy show. There are more things than we could probably describe or that you could probably describe. <laughs> Every day it's been a new sport. Yeah, we missed out on some good stuff. We missed out on the cornholing. I'm a fan of cornholing. There was competitive um, rock, paper, scissors, but then there were really? really, yeah. Wow. I, you know, it just shows that anything can be a skill if you can be better than somebody else, right? Yeah. I think they were doing combat juggling today, right? Or yes. Or maybe prelims or something? Combat juggling, where you fight while juggling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you're allowed to throw punches. Probably not. But you can strike other people's pins out of the air. Something. Okay. Yeah. Or throw a ball. I don't yeah. know. It, yeah. It, it's a sport. It's a skill. <laughs> uh, there was also... Oh, um, there was also kick volleyball, real crazy stuff. Uh, but upstairs here in the Skybox, Skybox 207, if you're in Vegas, please swing by, go, come give us a visit tomorrow. Uh, we got a LAN set up. We got 10 computers provided by Intel, which is awesome. Intel Extreme Masters, Intel Gaming coming through. Huge shout out to Martin, who's uh, running around as a dinosaur right now. We love Intel. Yeah, yeah, they've definitely come through for us. Uh, also, some other great sponsors I want to give some love to. Antlion Audio, creators of the Mod Mic. Keep your headphones at a Mod Mic. Parallels as well, a company that's pushing forward Max. You can see their uh, awesome banner on our side. Also, Mountain Fortune out here doing some sweet stuff. They've set up a Minecraft PvP map, a custom map that, that we're rocking out and displaying just for this. And uh, Bow Blade that our boy Gizmo has been running around uh, pretending to shoot people with. So that's a lot of fun. Um, I think we're going to get into the game fairly soon here. We got four on four. Some of the players maybe could help us out by changing their uh, Steam aliases, but we got some people who just showed up from the SkillCon floor, uh, which is awesome. Shout out to the Las Vegas uh, Wushu team, I think was the name of it. Um, those guys were competing, were checking us out yesterday. Um, also got our boy Banny, Banny Froyotech, uh, making the drive out here from SoCal. SoCal, he's got his own stream running and uh, was kicking some ass in TF2 and, well, uh, probably going to be dominating the MGE tomorrow. We'll see how he does as a dinosaur, though. It, uh, it's, a new, it's a new way to play in FPS as a, di as a dinosaur, <laughs> but really similar controls, mm -hmm. but a very different game. Yeah, and so it is class-based, just like TF2. Um, and we want to run down uh, the human classes that we have here. Uh, yeah, we could do that first. So uh, we got. Go ahead. Okay, so we've got the uh, the Pathfinder. It's got a shotgun, um, secondary um, pistols, firearms, and then they're throwable right now as a flare. Um, we've got the uh, the scientist. That's a sniper character with a sniper rifle, a trank rifle, a trank gun, um, some health that they can throw out for other teammates. Uh, we've got the Trapper that's got a neck gun, um, as well as uh, dual pistols, uh, and they can. Uh, the Trapper's got some, some landmines, some other ground traps. Right now, most of the characters just have one weapon for each slot, but we're starting to add uh, a variety of other things that you'll be able to sort of swap in and out and customize the character with the weapon you want to play with. 
Nice. And is there going to be a lot of variety there in terms of uh, which of these, you know, kind of what it adds to the class as well as like keeping to their role? Yeah, no, that, that was a big thing that we added with Extinction um, and direction we wanted to take it is, is variety and choice. Mm -hmm. So probably within the next two or three months, uh, you're going to see maybe a couple for each slot uh, of every weapon type, mostly still class based. There are going to be very few weapons that sort of carry over between classes, mm -hmm. maybe something like at the Glock or the Deagle. Um, but uh, it is, it is, so it is class-based. And then on the dinosaur side, we'll get to that, but we're, we're adding more dinosaurs. I mean, we went from having five in the first game to nine. Uh, yeah. Nine, 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 nine overall dinosaurs, but again, classes. So they all should play fairly similarly. It should be balanced. Right now the game's in early access. Mm -hmm. Might stay in early access till about January, February. We're not going to be something that, you know, you see this go for a year and then never hear from us again. Yeah. And uh, we will have some spectator features uh, going on in the game. We had some conversations about that, um, just things that can add to it. But obviously, the game's still in development, working more on those features, uh, which is very understandable. We do have a pyro class in this, right? The flamethrower. Yeah, how did um, I forget the pyro? That's the, uh, <laughs> the craziest human class. It's got a mm -hmm. flame saw. So flamethrower oh, right, plus chainsaw right. equals flame saw. Um, and then, yeah, it's got a flare gun. You can set a dinosaur on fire. Yeah in several different ways and uh we're doing funny things with this game we, we we really experimented a lot so like one of the things we added was if you're the terra the one of the flying dinosaurs you can pick up a pyro and if you drop it it'll explode and uh you can basically deal damage to the human team yeah oh really pyro wow bomb. uh yeah i like the pterodactyl class and you were mentioning some of the classes on the dinosaur side as well and uh kind of surprised me at first because i was seeing some everybody playing like the same dinosaurs at least among uh, the classes, which I was getting at. And so there's the pterodactyl and then the other flying unit, uh, which... The um, tupendactylus. Don't, don't even try, right, wow. until you, you say... Or they're just the tupa. Um, the two birds, right? Mm -hmm. The tupa is basically... Um, it's a charger. It's a flying charger class. You can, you know, fly in, knock someone off of a bridge. It's a little bit easier to sort of work with than the terra, which was really kind of a... Ma like a, it's, a it's a master skill class. Yeah. Um, you're going in, you're grabbing people up, you're dropping them. The tupa, if you yeah. just want to ram them, it's a good class for you. Yeah, I liked uh, the picking up and dropping was a lot of fun. I was getting terrorized by that when I was playing as a human. Um, but definitely as a dinosaur, there's a big thrill on that. It looks like the map that we're set up with right now that probably we're going to be starting with uh, also has a kind of like a water pathway. So you don't even have to fly super high up in the air in order to drop people. You can just drop them into the water. Um, kind of as a hazard. Um, also, you know, in the, the, the team deathmatch format, sometimes you were getting people kind of hiding out in corners, and that's where that uh, charging bird, you know, you're just dive bombing people and slamming them into the walls and getting the kills there. Uh, definitely seemed like a legit tactic. Yeah, it's a good class to break up c uh, crowds. There's a few things that you know, some of the dinosaurs have. So that's the charger class. You can charge and knock them left and right. You've also got like the Dil Dilophosaurus and the. Uh, Crylophosaurus, uh -huh. um, that are both spitter classes. So if you know you got humans camping, and they will, because there's uh, health crates and ammo crates, and they'll hang around there. But you can go in, spit them, uh, blind them, poison them, and and, and basically, uh, yeah, the, the, really the goal for the humans, no matter what game mode you're playing, is keep dinos at a distance. Once they get up close, it could be done. <laughs> so yeah, as a dino, once you get in close, uh, knock them back, spit at them, destroy them, eat their faces. Yeah, let's hop into the uh, game right now and take a peek at this because players are chomping away at each other. And uh, we'll see what we can here. It looks like Big Dinosaur Xanadu picks off uh, Game 9. And uh, we got the humans uh, just trying to fend him off. Um, there are some health packs there. We see the pyro. A lot of madness going on. As uh, Manwich getting a shotgun kill. Uh, some of the smaller dinosaur class there is actually, that was Banny. You're hopping on somebody and you're just gnawing at their flesh. But you can get that your teammate comes in and, and shoots the dinosaur off you, saving your life. And I thought that was a fun dynamic. That also is similar if we see a flyer and a flyer trying to pick somebody up. Yeah, the Terra, I mean, just going back to that, what I, I, re what I really like about it, it's my favorite dino class, mm -hmm. is that it adds aerial gameplay to FPS, which you don't usually see. Yeah. You can't just be looking around left and right. Um, you, you know, and a really good Terra player can come up from, you know, could be flying low beneath the bridge on the docks level, for instance, uh, and then just swoop up and grab you and drop you into the water, right? Yeah. Um, so what we're watching here, right, is, is the uh, get to the chopper game mode. <laughs> so the, uh, the goal for the humans is to go from one objective to the next um, and uh, eventually ending up at the, the chopper, hence the name. Um, but it's uh, objective, objective driven versus the uh, chaotic.
Yeah, and as we said, uh, you know, some of the spectator features uh, still being developed, like we don't see the, the status bar of where they're at. I think uh, just looking at uh, the, the players' uh, perspectives, I think they're about ready to get to the chopper. Um, and we see, oh, there's the diving bird uh, now on the ground trying to attack him. Did get the kill there. And, uh, yeah, I definitely think this aerial combat is pretty exciting and adds a realm of danger to the whole experience. Um, checking, looking down the line to see who's who at this. We've got some other skill con attendees uh, rolling in who should be hopping in soon. And there he is on top. I think that is Banny. Oh, he does eat the man witch. Uh, see if this pterodactyl can pick somebody up. No, not quite yet. Um, pterodactyl definitely takes a lot of skill. You know, if you hit the ground, then you move into that walking stage. But you can just hover right above the the ground and then just swoop somebody off and drop them into the water. The other thing that the uh, the pteranodon, I'll correct you, the pteranodon mm -hmm. um, uh, does for the dino team is it's um it's a support class and that it's a big distraction, right? So you've got yeah. all these humans that are now looking up, and then that's when a T Rex, like you can see here, comes oh. in and destroys everybody. <laughs> yeah, it just eats up Tack Rabu. You guys might be able to hear laughing at the wow! It somebody just gets thrown off, but it looks like the they have, have gotten to the chopper. So we will. Oh have no! I go. I'm. You're right. The humans have one. I apologize. Yeah. No, that's all right. Um, and uh, I think we will see the the players uh, switching sides, uh, flipping over to the uh, other class, and uh, things off to a good start. You know, this kind of reminds me of uh, Aliens vs Predator. You know, which is this like really fun, just crazy land game. You know, I mean, we we got to keep the lights on so that people can see our pretty face. But if we were to just turn down the lights here, you know, you'd really just heighten that tension and have people freaking out of just somebody coming out of left field, and all of a sudden you're just like, no. There are lots of oh crap moments. I, I like yeah. to say this is a game that it is. It's a fun game to die. It's a good day to die. It's a fun <laughs> game to see your character get lifted up by a T Rex and just, you know, it's enjoyable. Mm -hmm. um, it's a game that's got all level of skills, right? If you are not much of the FPS or the gamer, if you don't know what you're doing, you can still be a T-Rex and destroy people just by walking around. Yeah, and uh, I think we are getting ready to go here with uh, the second half of it shortly um, as the players are flipping those Rolling sides in. and, and uh, switching things around. Um, definitely important to have that versatility and skill. The sniper class is definitely a little bit difficult to hit those shots, um, especially at long range or scoping in quick. Um, the dinosaurs are hard to spot out, but if you can hit those shots, it definitely pays off. It's rewarding, right? And, yeah. and actually, both of the skill classes, the Terra and the Sniper, are things that are being worked on a lot right now mm -hmm. um, as far as balance and mechanics go. So you'll see them get better. Um, uh, but uh, it's still fun to play as right now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the Terra seemed like it really had a, a high ceiling in, in terms of flying around that map um, and actually hitting your swoop um, and, and grabbing that person. It wasn't quite that easy to do, but uh, also in the game that I was playing, a uh, guy that was really skilled was just snatching me up left and right and uh, getting a lot of frags. Yeah, it's the, um, the sort of counter, the vulnerability of the Terra, right, is that it's up in the air I mean, really, humans need to stick together, so when that happens, mm -hmm. you shoot them out of the grip, or if someone, like you were saying, is being pounced, you shoot them out. If you're wandering around as a human, you've you got to be really skilled. Not, I mean, that's a sniper character, is knowing how to uh, be stealthy, shoot in scope, go in and out of scope really quickly, defend yourself against a terror that's going to fly in and try to do that. Yeah. Um, and uh, let's go into the dinosaur classes a little bit more. you got the T-Rex, uh, big, lumbering around, able to chew people up. You mentioned that's just kind of killing them. Um, you also have the Charger class, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, the Carnotaurus. Actually, quick story on that one. That was when we made the first game, Primal Carnage. That was a player choice. We, we created the first uh, four dinosaur classes then that even the five classes now are based off of. But the, the fifth one was based off of a poll of the, uh, the fans that we had. Oh, and they nice. picked the Carnotaurus, and so that's what we did. We're going to actually be doing a lot more of that with this game. We've got our development boards up on Trello. We're taking a lot of feedback. Yeah. So the uh, players are trying to capture the second point here. Uh, Banny on that uh, human side now getting a shotgun kill before he gets taken down. Also the uh, Pyromancer fending off a attack by a Velociraptor. Um, that's, a, that's a little Dilo, right? I think that was a Dilo. No, that's oh. a Raptor, yeah. Okay, yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Xanadu, who's been uh, t tearing it up in Counter-Strike. We were playing a little bit of Counter-Strike before. Um, he actually uh, drove out here from Arizona. Um, Intel employee who showed up. Manwich also getting a kill. 
And it uh, looks like some madness going on, but the dinosaur being fended off. Shotguns out here, and the humans doing a pretty good job sticking together right now. I think so, yeah. You can't... Uh they're, they're advancing. They're making it their way to what? Are we on the third objective that they're moving towards? It uh, looks like they're still on the second. Okay. Um, and they're trying to get that gate open, though. We see the pterodactyl trying to swoop in, try to clear things up. The other dinosaur is coming in here and uh, trying to bounce people out. Um, but that pterodactyl kind of getting stuck in there. You can see that gate almost getting down. Flares being thrown. Humans taking well. They got, oh, he's picked up and stuck on the tree. But they got the gate open. That's going to make that second objective a little bit easier to get to. Mm-hmm. And uh, still the dinosaurs trying to attack in here, and breaking up the humans is kind of an important aspect. You know, it's very similar to Left 4 Dead in this asymmetrical gameplay style. Yeah, Left 4 Dead, um, Aliens vs. Uh, uh, yeah, Predators was a good, a mm. good reference point, natural selection to all of these. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a, it's a challenge making a game where you've got, they're not strictly humanoid characters. Um, Get it off! Get it off! But... Uh, Ooh, there we go. Dinosaur chewing down on somebody. The rest of the humans trying to come in there to, to get a rescue. Not quite quick enough. Um, and uh, uh, definitely what's cool, the uh, smaller dinosaurs, similar to uh, the hunter in Left 4 Dead, where you're doing that leap attack. The, ra the, uh, the Nova Raptor, yeah. Nova Raptor. And uh, definitely thought it cool. We're not quite able to see it, um, you know, in that spec feature. But when you are that dinosaur class, you get a really cool marker on the ground as to like where you're going to leap to. I thought that was a nice little assist. Yeah, that's an addition we put in there. We're still tweaking it. The uh, the ability to aim your pounce, and you can oh. actually use that to move around the map to jump up onto to, to, to get yourself up <laughs> in <the> elevated positions. <laughs> we see this pyromancer uh, or pyro, what whatever. Uh, fire, just getting fire. chased down by three dinosaurs. Just completely cornered and, and chewed up. Nothing you can do there. And Pyro is back, but kind of getting locked down. And, uh, and I think this time is getting difficult for the uh, humans to kind of beat. That last set was pretty close, uh, pretty quick. How much time is on the clock? Yeah, they really need to go in together to really get to that second objective before mm -hmm. the time runs out. They might want to go in with uh, with a whole bunch of pyros uh, alongside of maybe, I want to say commandos. I don't, I'm not seeing too many yeah. commandos on the field. Uh, I like commando a lot when I was playing. I thought the assault rifle uh, was very effective. Looks like that pyro did get scooped up into the air. Uh, but we did see three pyros out on the field and uh, with six on the side of uh, the dinosaurs. They have a little bit of an advantage there. If you have a sniper out on the field, you can hear the crack of that rifle. And the rifle is definitely pretty powerful. Yeah, good move. If you if you uh, station one of those uh, the scientists like out back, and that's maybe where that sniper is right now. Um, wow. Gives some good defense while the uh, the commandos go in. Mm -hmm. We'll see if they can get there. And uh, definitely combat still around this gate. Uh, the humans had showed really good coordination up to this point, but now having a little bit of difficulty finding their next objective and, and making some progress. It's just around the corner, we see that scientist has been. Uh, it's blind. That's that purple thing. So she can't see what's going on at that point. Yeah, that's uh, uh, kind of the spitter dinosaur, uh, the one dinosaur that has a projectile. Uh, two. That's the Dilophosaurus, right? Oh, the okay. um, the Krylo um, uh, poisons them, so you're going to take damage over time. Oh, okay. So if you see it go green, it's uh, it's poisoned. It's if it's green. purple, it's blind. Mm, okay. And we can see a well, one of the humans getting their uh, their 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 face mauled. Yeah, yeah Manwich doing the consuming this time around. Doesn't quite get the swipes on this pyro. Still doing some damage. You see the big charger dinosaur running through there. And uh, Banny getting a shotgun kill, though. But he's got to watch out for the dinosaur behind him. Ah! Yeah, that shotgun's really Oof. powerful up close. And it might I'm take out that uh, that, that, that dialer right there. Oh! But Xanadu charges him down. Oh, can he get a second one? Does do a little bit of damage. And then flying around might just swoop back down. I love the mobility of those flying dinosaurs can see the whole map but the humans are maybe getting too stuck on trying to kill those dinosaurs at the early at the early part of this uh, this sprint they mm -hmm. really got to just keep moving deal a little bit of damage but really get to that second cap point yeah I mean it is an objective based game mode you you have to move forward you have to make progress um, you can't get too stuck into that team deathmatch aspect um, these maps as well I'm glad that we're playing in an objective format the team deathmatch is a lot of fun uh, in this one, uh, when I played it on Team Bat Deathmatch, there was kind of a corner where all the humans just holed up in. It was kind of difficult for the dinosaurs to get in here. But with the objectives, it's forcing that movement, forcing them to try to move as a unit and uh, expose themselves to the dangers of the dinosaurs. So right now, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, we've got some action going on in that second cap point, which maybe is going to allow that's the, uh, the rest of the team to advance forward. Yeah, looking like a lot of uh, deaths going out for the humans here. 
Um, and they have captured that second point, though, and uh, trying to capture and move forward into the next uh, location. Um, now, we, since we don't quite have the, the visual cues here. Like, what's the storyline of this map? We already saw them open the gate, um, and they do have to get to the cargo ship at the end. Right, so they're going to be right next. They're going to be going down uh, the center of uh, uh, the map to the third cap point, and once they get that, the action will hit the ship, and then it's off on the chopper, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, what they've got it uh, to, to work with right now at the third cap point is they can get a sniper up on the roof if they want to of one of those uh, those cargo holds. Mm -hmm. um, once uh, they can get once they get past the sandbags into that third cap point, and oh, it's going on right now. Uh, a, a good pyro. That's that's exactly how to play this. Yeah, it's kind of hard for the dinosaurs to get in and shake things up, but we see Banny getting taken down by the charging dinosaur. Another human getting eaten up. It looks like the dinosaurs have kind of cleared things out, lurking around, but you can see the humans uh, under this kind of cargo crane trying to come back in and get back involved with it. Um, and uh, I think just took down a dinosaur in there as well. Uh, but the dinosaur is getting some kills. Oh, does a lot of damage there. Uh, the uh, commando, though, hanging in there. Finally, a game eight goes down. I think that might be Martin over there. Oh no, one of our uh, kung fu artists getting chewed up. Yeah, with this third cap point, I mean, once the humans get in there, I think they pre they pretty much have the advantage. So the strategy on the dinosaurs is keep them as far away, like keep them stuck, you know, mm -hmm. almost at the spawn point of the second cap. Yeah, and Banning getting some uh, shotgun kills in here uh, before he gets chewed up. And uh, again, the humans needing to stay close, and it looks like uh, the dinosaurs persevered and is unable to get to the chopper. It's a good first game. Um, how many maps do you uh, have uh, implemented with this get to the chopper mode at the moment? With get to the chopper, I believe we have four. Okay. Um, we might be working on another one. Uh, we've got a total of, I think, 13 unique maps. Uh, and then maybe with, with snow and day and night things, maybe upwards of 20 uh, different sort of maps that you can play on. Cool, cool.